Du er en spændende, dygtig og meget inspirerende bekendtskab. Så værsgo. Inge Marie har gang i noget rigtigt, som jeg synes er, er dejligt. Og derfor skal hun have det. Ej, amen, så. tusind tak. Så derfor får du æren. Tusind, tusind tak. Og så skal han have den fineste fem. Værsgo, Christian. Tak, Mads. Selv tak. Nu får den lige her, fordi jeg kan godt lide dig. Værsgo. Hvad skal du have, Karl? Jeg sammenligner ham næsten med Ernst Hemingway, hvad jeg har jo læst. Han er rigtig stor militær, og jeg synes, at han fortjener at komme. Så tillykke med jo. den her fra nu og med sko. Ja. Tak skal du have, Benny. Og så synes jeg, det er jo lidt som ham og han over, hvis fremmer noget at fortælle. Og her med overdraget den til dig, Bjarne. Jo, tak. Tak for det. Ja, så er det. Ja, tak. Så må vi høre, hvad han har at sige. Værsgo. Tak. Jeg synes, du skal have stafetten som. Tak for det, Morten. Det er jeg glad for. Ja, det kan jeg godt forstå. Velkommen til TV Møns stafetten. Vi er igen på Klintholm Havn. Vi er lige uden for havnemålen her. Øhm, vi er her, fordi Tom Tofting har givet stafetten videre til Patrick Cohen. Og øh, nu øh, går vi over på engelsk som en undtagelse. Men øh, det er, fordi Patrick har kun været i landet i godt et år. Øhm, så jeg spørger dig, Tom, hvorfor du har valgt at give anerkendelsesstafetten til Patrick. Så so why do you give this uh, acknowledgement stick to Patrick? I'm giving this to Patrick because um, I think it's an interesting story. How you and Kisa found each other, how you ended up uh, in our little corner of the world. And then I love to hear more about your little kite school. So here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. That's why we are sitting in the sand dunes i uh, hvad hedder det klitterne her. Jeg taler lidt dansk ind imellem. Det er okay. <laughs> du, du forstår. Du forstår noget dansk. Ja, ja, jeg forstår noget. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we're sitting here um, because we're going to see you in a, w the end of the program um, doing some kite jumps. The wind is good today. It's very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Tom was giving you the the stick, and he's saying it's an exciting story how um, you met your wife and ended here. So should we start with that? Uh, yeah, we met in Mexico, mm -hmm. in a place called Isla Blanca, uh, close to Cancun. So that's the Caribbean part of Mexico, and I was uh, working at a kite school there, and she was working for a Norwegian. Um, a Norwegian company that did kite camps. Mm -hmm. So she was sort of the, the tour guide and the group leader. And we met there. For dansk dansk talen vil jeg lige sige at kite surfing as you draw. You you're putting up a we will see it. Yes. <laughs> so um so she was doing that kind of um holidays and organizing and you were doing teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, she was the guide for a kite camp. Mm -hmm. And the kite camp came to the kite school that I was working at in Mexico. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then she changed her flight ticket shortly after we met. And then we actually lived there together for, um, I think it was two and a half months. In Mexico. In Mexico. In love. In love. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, later, uh, when she did need to fly back home, Uh, we stayed in contact and organized to meet in Brazil um, because she also had, that was the destination of her next kite camps that mm -hmm. she was hosting. And she helped me um, get employed by the same company. So then I was the uh, one of the instructors to teach the people. Um, I was specializing in teaching jumping and some tricks that the people wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. And, and then you lived in, in Brazil for some time. Yeah, it was uh, the first year. It was, I think, three months. Mm -hmm. So then how does the story then get you to <laughs> this part <laughs> of Denmark? Well, we, we, we both worked for this uh, kite camp company together for, yeah, it was two or three camps that we did together. And then she had the idea to create her own uh, traveling company where we would do our own kite camps. And those were actually, we called them progression camps. So it was the first one that either one of us had heard about that was um, 
specializing in all of the people wanting to learn new things. Mm -hmm. So we had lesson programs for different levels of experience. So, um, so I, to translate it to Danish, I could say it's an den udvidede um, kitesurfer afdeling, altså for, for specialister. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, okay. so people came to learn new things. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And that went really well. Uh, we did that for about three years. Mm -hmm. And then... Around in, in the world? Uh, different yeah, different places. different places in the world. We had mm -hmm. South Africa, Brazil, uh, Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. uh, on the east east coast of Africa, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> uh, and Tarifa in Spain mm -hmm. and Mexico, <laughs> and yeah. then uh, the reason we're here was really the biggest reason was the desire to have children. We wanted to live in one place. Uh, we thought that it was better to live in one place, having our first child, rather than continuing a traveling company where we live in mm -hmm. up to four or five different countries in the year. Mm -hmm. And this place just fit. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find it? She did, actually. Uh -huh. um, it was, uh, she was going on vacation, just I think a one week vacation with a friend from Belgium. And it was just a girl's trip, holiday. They saw pictures of the cliffs. They knew they wanted to meet in Denmark, and they came here. Uh, after that, uh, me and her lived in Mexico for another season, and she told me about this place, and we had it on our minds for a possibility of a place to to settle. Um, so we came and checking it out uh, with almost no. We didn't really commit to any long-term living here, but we came to check it out. And then we, we stayed. We loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the condition for kite surfing is good here. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes, very good. Because we already have at the Faru, you yeah. know, when you come off the bridge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Faru is a very popular spot. Mm -hmm. But maybe this is more advanced for those that are more advanced. Yes. Or? Yes, you could definitely you could definitely say that. Um, You need to be more experienced anytime you're kiting in the open sea mm -hmm. versus if you're kiting in a in a closed lagoon, especially with shallow water, is very good for beginners. Um, even advanced people love flat water because it makes it easier to do your jumps and your tricks. You are from California, quite far away. Your wife is from Norway and you find Clintholm Hound. Yes. Quite amazing. Yes. And your wife is speaking Danish, and you understand yeah. quite a, a lot. And yeah. you, you know a special Danish. <laughs> you call it bad, bad dansk. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've spent two summers working at a Pier to Heaven, which is the bar in Klintholmhavn, mm -hmm. and there I speak a lot of bar Danish. <laughs> okay. So you're going to learn more and more. And you were saying you wanted to settle down because you wanted a child. And you have a boy, one year old? Yes, he, he's uh, he's 14 months. Mm -hmm. And yes, when, when we came here, uh, we were, I think, four months pregnant. Um, so we had uh, we had some time to mm -hmm. see if it was the right place to, to give birth to him and to find a place to live. And... Mm -hmm. And it all happened uh, very comfortably, I think. Mm. And it, it felt right. And for me, it was most important that she was in a place that she felt comfortable and it felt right. And to make the story make a little bit more sense, uh, her parents live in Holbeck. Okay. So that's only about an hour and a half away. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of the best uh, mm. kite surfing uh, nature destination that we found that's also close to her her parents, which is awesome. And her sister also lives in uh, Ringsted, mm -hmm. so, uh, which is also yeah. uh, almost hour and a half from here. Yeah, because that would be my, that would have been my <laughs> next question, because yes. when you get a child, you want to be close to the family. Yes. Yeah, so, so her family is nearby. What about your family? They are all close to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, that's my, my mother and father, 
uh, live outside the city in Marin County. My brothers live in San Francisco. Um, the rest of my family, all my uncles and aunts, are all in somewhere, uh, somewhere in New England, mm -hmm. so the east coast of the U.S. Mm. But we had to pick one. We can't be close <laughs> to both. <laughs> no. no. How did you, did you grow up? Grew up. Uh, I was born in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived then in Connecticut shortly after being born for seven years. Then when I was seven years old, my family moved to California. Mm -hmm. um, and there we, we moved to a place called Tiburon. It's a 30-minute drive from San Francisco. It's, so it's the north side of the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. And I lived there. Uh, was that because of your father's job or what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My father got a, a better job opportunity and I think my whole family really liked the idea of moving to California. It, it was an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was happy for it. So you come from a family that likes adventure? <laughs> yes. Somebody there. Is that? Oh, that's your wife. That's my wife and wow, my child. Wow, you should come yes, over come and come say over. hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Okay, what a surprise. Good timing, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, little boy in the boots. Oh, oh. baby. Oh. Hi. Hi. Eva? Kasia. What, what's your name? Kasia. 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 Oh, storm. Oh, storm. 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 Wow. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Storm. That's a good name for, for a boy with a father yeah. that's jumping. <laughs> yeah. Storm. Hi. We like it. Okay. He was born the day we, th we picked the name. So you came to Moon and gave birth to this little boy at home? Y yes. He was born in Maulubi. Um, which is the first place we lived in East Moon. And we really, really liked um, the, the home birth system here and, and the midwives and just everything about how they treat you and, and the follow up. And they made us, they helped us feel very comfortable. Did you know about that before you settled down for Moon? That, yes. that, yeah, you knew about it. So that was maybe part of it. Yes. The thing, yes. how to give birth. How yes. we do it here on Moon, yes. how you can do it here on Moon. Yes, Definitely. we were okay. able to do it how, how we wanted to. <laughs> Good to hear. It was very important for us to at least try to do it as natural as possible. Mm. Of course, we were ready that if something happened, we had to do it some another way. But mm. yeah, it was very important. And she did it as natural yeah. as possible. <laughs> <laughs> With help from these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Storm is born in Denmark. How about your resident permits? Uh, you're from California, you're from Norway. How is that then to be allowed to be here? Well, we are married and um, there is something called the EU mm -hmm. law or something like that, uh, that allows Patrick as my family to, to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it mattered also that my family lives here. Hmm. So, uh, you got five years residency. Yeah. And after that, he can apply for permanent residency. You come from a family that likes adventure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, my whole family lived in New England, and my father and mother were the the ones who moved away from the East Coast to somewhere else. And then now I'm the one who moved across the world. So they <laughs> to somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so there's good understanding for that. So when did you start doing this kite surfing? Well, starting kite surfing uh, started me uh, and my desire to travel. It sort of sent me off to Mexico <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, I started when I was 18. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I, grew up, I grew up in San Francisco. Um, skateboarding was, was what I did with all my friends. And it's one uh -huh. of the best cities in the world for skateboarding. So I did that through my whole youth. And then when I found uh, windsurfing and kitesurfing, for me, it had everything that I loved about the freedom of skateboarding and the fun and the, the, the individual sport where you're, it's, it's just for you, mm -hmm. um, but in nature and in the water. Mm. Um, so 
Yeah, once I started with the windsurfing and kite surfing, it was... You were hooked onto that. I was hooked, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for those who uh, doesn't uh, know about, what, what is, what, what's the feeling and what does it take? Uh, now you're saying that you, you knew already um, skate, skateboarding. Yeah. But to begin with, does it need a lot of force or power? I, I, muscle power? I would say it's mostly technique. It's mostly it, neither technique. one of the sports, uh, windsurfing or kite surfing, require a lot of muscle because you have the power of the wind that's doing everything for you. Um, but also you wear a harness mm -hmm. and it's a body harness with a hook and that hook is going to be connected to where all the power comes from. Mm -hmm. So really it's more about the balance of distributing your weight to, um, to counter the, mm -hmm. the, the power of the kite and to use the power of the kite by balancing your weight um, to make the board move. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very much a, a technique mm -hmm. sport and uh, it takes the, the time and the commitment to, to learn it. So, so when you have uh, people who want to learn, if they are skiing, for example, if they know about that, is it then easier for them or what can you see that will help them uh, learn this kind of technique? Is there something that helps? I, w I would actually say just patience mm -hmm. and it's it's more in the brain than in the body as to what's going to make it easier for you and anybody who's patient that um, is moved forward by the excitement of learning something new um, is I think going to do well at it. Um, I've had a lot of students, maybe a, a guitar player for example or um, some musicians who mm -hmm. are very good with sensitive touch mm -hmm. and understanding the process of learning a, a skill that is uh, for hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they do better than a professional snowboarder. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and that's actually very common. Um, maybe somebody with uh, skills in fixing clothing or knitting or something and they just understand yeah. careful touch technique and ah. practice. That's interesting. Patience. So, yeah. so have you learned it? Do you skate? If I skateboard, mm -hmm. I'm not very good at that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I'm very good at kite surfing. Uh, yeah, but skateboarding. Uh, yeah, I, I have fun with it, but I'm not like Patrick. I have a feeling we are gonna. We will see something uh, quite um, extraordinary because you said <laughs> you can maybe jump up to ten meter in this weather. Is that, it, it's, that's, it's good that's wind. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. <laughs> when the, the stronger the wind, the more you can jump. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a it's a sport where you're really at the at, at the mercy, but also at the your power is is the the power that the weather brings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in stronger wind, you can jump higher. Um, if the wind is better quality, you can do better. What's the danger when you when you do that kind of sport? Uh, well, for one, you're you're in water. So of course, if you're in deep water, um, probably the most dangerous thing is that you go too far and you're tired. And when you, it's very easy to get yourself very far from shore and you may be having a great time. And then if something happens wrong with your equipment and you're very far from shore mm. um, and you're tired, it's very easy to be maybe too far to swim. Mm. Um, also, the most dangerous things that I've seen happen have to do with, uh, the weather changing on people. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the technical skills in the sport, but needing to be a weatherman mm. and needing to have good judgment in the water. So many people can learn kite surfing with no water experience, get themselves two kilometers from shore in some crazy current, and then a line breaks on their kite, and that's when you're in a dangerous scenario. Mm. Unless, of course, you have people to rescue you. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you go every day or every time it's weather for it? Um, well, right now I do have a, a son just over one years old, so <laughs> yeah. he, he's the priority. Um, I would say that here in, in Klintholm Haven, combined with the spot that we have in, in Fau, um, probably 70% of the days in the week you can kite surf. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so my wife and I take turns um, and we do a lot of uh, kite sessions where we bring storm and one of us the boy, goes to the beach. The boy storm. <laughs> and, yeah, my son storm. Yeah. One of us will go to the beach and, uh, and go kiting first and then the other one will bring storm mm. wearing our wetsuit 
Uh-huh. Uh, in that age? No, 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 not into you? the water. No, we no. just we bring him to the beach. Uh, We're already wearing our wetsuit. Okay. So when the first person finishes their session, okay. then they can take their wetsuit off, yeah. take care of Storm, yeah. and then uh, the second person can go. So he actually really enjoys that, and he, en he enjoys being on the beach. And mm. last time we went kiting, my wife was kiting, and he was uh, staring at the kite and mm. very happy when she was riding. Yeah. So um, Tom, that gave you the stick, um, was also saying that you created a um, moon water sport. So apart from kite surfing, what else uh, water sport? Or is it, but yeah, let me ask, what, what is the, that you can learn? It's um, also, it's kite surfing is our, probably both of our biggest specialty, <laughs> uh, but also stand up paddle boarding. Uh -huh. And stand up paddle boarding is a very nice uh, sister sport to have with kite surfing because when there is no wind and you can't kite surf, the more calm the conditions, the better it is for stand up paddle boarding. Mm -hmm. So I would say every kite school I've worked for in my whole life has had stand-up paddle boards involved because then you have something nice to do uh, on the calm weather days. And it's actually uh, just a piece of uh, something you're standing on, on the water, and you have a stick? It's, it's a giant surfboard with a long paddle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's also, it brought me in awe. Yeah. yeah, it's a surfboard that's big enough to stand on mm -hmm. without any momentum. Yeah. Because any normal surfboard without moving uh, is too small to make you float. <laughs> yeah. So, so on that one, uh, that, that also takes patience and um, balance. Yes, um, and like kite surfing, it's as challenging as the weather conditions of the day. Mm. So I would say that in a, in a flat pond or lake with no wind and flat water, It's actually very easy, and uh, you can also get a, a larger board or a smaller board, so that with the larger boards it's very stable, and that's something that um, I would say almost anybody can do. Um, When you look at it from distance, it's the closest uh, you can get to uh, walking on water. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's a really cool sport because it's very accessible to people, mm -hmm. and like I say, almost anybody can do it. Um, and if you can't do it standing up, uh, some people can't stand up, period. Mm -hmm. They can sit down mm -hmm. or they can go on their knees. And it's a, it, it's a very good way for people who want to get closer to the water mm -hmm. to get started. Um, mm -hmm. And it's quite rewarding because it, it often does feel awkward at first and you have to get your sea legs. But very quickly in a, in a two-hour stand-up paddle tour, um, the people can go from feeling awkward to feeling totally in control and just free. <laughs> so you have um, um, tourists coming or the moon, people living on moon, moon boa, or who is coming here to, to learn that? Both. Yeah. Um, we've had some tourists from Germany or Netherlands or Norway. Um, and then we've had some locals who live here all year round. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of people from, that have summer houses Mm -hmm. both from Germany and Denmark. So where do you do it? Here or on the other beach? Or? The weather decides. <laughs> um, the cool thing about this island and one of the things that we like the most is that you have to drive maximum 45 minutes to get to the opposite side of the island where you may have opposite weather conditions or wind direction. Mm -hmm. So very often if you want to, um, if the wind's blowing from the south, for example, the Clintholm coast is facing south, then you'll have great kite surfing in Clintholm and then great stand-up paddle boarding in uh, Ulvsail, which is the northern coast of mm. Moon. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very nice, the ability to move. <laughs> When you say uh, water sport, um, we don't go into something with a big motor or something like that, making noises. You make a good point, actually. All of, all of our, the sports that we are passionate about are uh, motor-free. <laughs> um, we like to use the power of the wind, uh, the power of our, our bodies to paddle. Um, the waves. My, my other passion is, uh, is free diving and spearfishing. Mm -hmm. And that's also you know, a, a self-propelled sport. Um, we do hope next year to be doing snorkeling as well. 
mm -hmm. in our in our water sports school and I've done a lot of free diving around the island and there's some nice nice spots for snorkeling when you say free diving that's so without bottles free diving is diving underwater holding your breath yeah so technically anybody who holds their breath and gets their whole body underwater mm. um, is free diving <laughs> and it's the sport of just pursuing going some people like to go deeper and deeper some people like to just uh, swim as far as they can only one meter underwater and you, some people like to just maybe hold the stone and just go underwater and sit there <laughs> Uh, really? it's, it's all free diving. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long can you hold your breath? Uh, the longest I've timed myself is four minutes and four minutes. 20 seconds. Wow. Um, but that's, of course, uh, that was laying in my tent in Mexico, totally calm, mm. uh, not using an ounce of energy. So, Patrick, sun is here, it's raining, it's stormy, the weather is perfect for <laughs> Skype. Um, <laughs> Kite, kite surfing, so um, should we uh, do that? But before that, you, um, you're going to pass this one on. So who's going to after you? Uh, who am I passing it to? Yes. Uh, I am Anyone? going to pass the moon stafetten to Ankira Brestesen. Um, I, I met her my first year here and um, She's uh, been a very good friend and also a colleague that I've been working with at the... She's the manager of uh, Peer to Heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think she's a great person and very interesting. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. I hope that um, our seers, if we want the name in, in Danish, that uh, they understand the, this interview. So this was very special to do it in English. And now you're yes. going to do the jumping in yes. the rain. Thank you very much. Yes. Unskul va jeg tælle ikke mal dansk, men tak for i dag. Thank mm -hmm. you.